Hello and welcome to this recorded e-learning on Vertex 6 and Spartan 6 HDL coding techniques part 1. My name is Frank Nelson. I'll be your instructor for this module. This module introduces the design considerations that most FPGA designers will use to get optimum results. This module introduces some of the primary concepts that impact the quality of results a designer will get when synthesizing for a Vertex 6 or Spartan 6 FPGA. This module provides detailed recommendations about creating effective HDL that will provide high speed and save FPGA resources. If you are an experienced ASIC designer or new to FPGA design, this module will help you reduce your learning curve and get productive faster with your new FPGA design. This module will help you build a good design that will use minimal FPGA resources and get good performance. These practices are designed to promote fast and efficient FPG designs. After completing this module, you'll be able to code your register resources so your design will have fewer control sets and run at a higher system speed. You'll also be able to avoid the most common coding mistakes that reduce device utilization and system speed, and be able to anticipate how your design will map to the register resources. We first want to point out that these are guidelines. They are not rules, so they are not perfect, but we do believe they will very often give you the best result. These suggestions are especially important because Spartan 6 and Vertex 6 have a six input LUT architecture and flip-flops with some limitations. Previous FPGA architectures have a lot of similarities regarding control signal usage with the flip-flops. So with careful consideration to the differences between FPGAs, users should be able to apply most of the same suggestions that we give here to older devices as well. The key is to realize that these tips will allow the implementation tools to group more logic together into slices, which allows greater device utilization and gives the implementation tools the opportunity to find a better parse solution. This is compounded by the fact that often a poorly coded piece of logic creates a timing critical path for a designer to resolve. And often designers waste a great deal of time resynthesizing and repeating a place and route over and over, hoping to meet a timing objective. If you barely get your design to fit inside the FPGA, the implementation tools software options may not be as helpful as you might like. The best solution is to first shrink the register and LUT utilization of your design and to port all functionality to the dedicated hardware resources that you can. Now this may require the designer to employ more clever use of the unused dedicated resources. The side benefit is that since the dedicated hardware is fixed in silicon, its timing should be faster than you could implement equivalent logic with slice resources. Likewise, the dedicated resources will consume less power than a slice implementation, so plan on trying to use the block RAM for finite state machines and FIFOs, and try to use as much of the DSP slice resources for arithmetic functionality as you can. The easiest way to add some of these resources to your design is through instantiation of components from the core generator. So you might want to check out the core generator, make sure you're utilizing all the dedicated hardware resources that you can from that IP. Now synthesis tools try to improve the speed of a design by replicating logic. Logic replication is a synthesis option that allows the synthesis tool to replicate signals that have trouble meeting timing due to a large expected fan out. Now this will generate more registers and can be a problem if you are running out of available resources. So if you are already synthesizing with, us, with this option on, you may want to resynthesize with the option off and compare your result. Ideally, your FPGA should have device utilization around 85% or less. This works well since the tools have space to move the logic around. Often, this is possible when you port some of the design's components to the dedicated hardware resources. The key to building a fast design is to build a design that uses fewer limiting resources. In fact, registers can be at a premium. This is because the LUT capabilities have grown to a six input LUT structure. So if the design you're using is migrating from a previous architecture, it is probably pipeline sum. 
So this design that you're migrating will need to be re-optimized and re-pipelined to build an appropriate pipeline stage for Vertex 6 or Spartan 6. This is because the LUT 6 is 40% more efficient than the 4-input LUT used in previous architectures. But this won't yield a performance benefit if your design only uses a couple of LUTs with 4 inputs, like a design being migrated might only require. So right off the bat, keep in mind that you need to pipeline to a lesser degree in Vertex 6 and Spartan 6, and you need to use as much of the dedicated hardware, that is the shift register LUT, block RAM, DSP slice, etc., and use as much of that as possible to shrink your device utilization of LUTs and registers. Getting these resources properly inferred can help you manage your design size. For example, designers often don't use the shift register LUT in their design. Recall, this resource saves registers from being wasted to balance a pipeline application. Remember that it is important to use the appropriate resource and check that it was inferred properly by your synthesis tool, usually done by a schematic viewer or technology viewer. There are also other reasons inherent in the registers available in the FPGA that may prevent users from inferring the best resources, specifically the shift register LUT, RAM, and DSP slice resources. Now we will talk about how to get those resources best in part two of this series. Meeting your device utilization and timing goals can be more difficult if you are not careful about coding properly for the register's control signal limitations. Now we'll get into control signal management in just a moment. Another topic we'll discuss is the use of active low control signals. Now we were all taught at the university to use active low for power savings, but that does not apply to FPGAs, or at least the newest FPGAs. Simply put, active high control signals not only don't save power, but they end up using extra logic. Now, we're not going to spend any time discussing synthesis options in this REL, but we do want to remind you that careful use of your synthesis options can unnecessarily increase the size of your design. We recommend careful use of the logic replication option because it can increase the size of your design inappropriately. So be careful about allowing your synthesis tool to modify your design results. In fact, we discuss proper synthesis tool usage and the caveats associated with a lot of synthesis tool features in our Designing for Performance course. So you might want to review the course description and consider attending the course sometime. It is very important that designers remember to pay attention to the control signals they are inferring. This is especially important because the flip-flops in each slice share all the same control signals. In this case, there are eight registers per slice. The point being that if you infer lots of different control signals, you can end up wasting flip-flops since the implementation tools cannot group flip-flops into the same slice if they don't share the same control signals. This means that if there are two registers and both use the same clock and reset, but different clock enables, then each register is forced to be part of a different control set and cannot be placed in the same slice. If the case arises later that these flip-flops cannot be grouped with other flip-flops with the same control signals, then these flip-flops will be isolated in their slices and the remaining flip-flops will be forced to go unused. To be specific, control signals are of course sets, resets, and clocks, and a control set is a group of control signals that is used for one slice. This is of concern for designs that have several low fan-out control signals in their design. In fact, more specifically, what we are trying to teach you is to build your design with consideration to sharing as many control signals as possible, and consider this as early in the design flow as possible. Most often, designers that build with too many control sets will not recognize that they have a problem until much later. So if you cannot anticipate that you may have too many control signals, keep a lookout after implementation to see if there are many slices that have unused registers. If so, you may have a problem of this nature. Now also note that VCC and ground are connected to each unused port, that is the set, the reset, and the clock enable port and the flip-flops. So if you are not using the set, reset, or clock enable port, they will be tied to either VCC or ground so VCC and ground are also considered control signals, and this can be a factor in preventing flip-flops from being used as well. But the key thing is to try to share your control signals as much as possible. 